Hi, this video is in continuation of my previous two videos on code comparison, namely 2A and 2B. I have presented here a mix of different topics which may or may not be related but are relevant reference for my previous videos on code comparison. Moreover, topics such as failure modes and failure theories are only briefly discussed here as background info for code bases. So, what is a failure? Whenever we imagine an engineering failure, an image of something broken comes into mind immediately, which in some ways is also a correct definition. But a more comprehensive definition would be that any component, part or assembly fails to carry out its intended purpose. A type of material behavior can be a failure or a success depending upon its intended function. For instance, in a pipe mill, material has to yield or deform to produce a pipe. And if it doesn't yield, it will be called a failure. On the other hand, the same pipe when installed in a refinery or a petrochemical plant will be called a failure if it deforms or yield. So the condition for material failure will become that stresses induced in a body exceeds the allowable material strength. And to be precise for static equipment or piping, most common failure is initiation or start of yielding, which will later lead to fracture or rupture. In this slide, I have listed some mode of failures that can occur in an engineering material, namely ductile rupture, corrosion, brittle fracture, fatigue, creep, yielding, elastic buckling, erosion or wear. Usually these type of failures occur or manifest in the form of these four which are fracture, plastic deformation, elastic buckling or deflection and a material change. And a material change can be due to chemical, metallurgical or nuclear reasons. An engineering failure depends on several factors such as type of material, flaws or discontinuities in a material, types of loading, etc. Furthermore, for ductile materials, failure is usually the start of yielding or plastic behavior. And for brittle material, it is usually specified by fracture. And to predict failure in a particular material, there should be an upper limit on the applied load or stress that the material can sustain without fail which give rise to failure theories that relate the calculated stress in a material to a material allowable limit. This limit is usually obtained from a, from a uniaxial or 1D tensile test. We have several theories that predicts the failure in a material and some of which are maximum principal stress theory which is also called Rankine theory, maximum principal strain theory or St. Venant theory, Maximum shear stress theory or Tresca theory, maximum strain energy theory or Beltrami theory, and maximum distortional energy theory or von Mises. Several ASME codes utilizes the theory that are highlighted in green, that is Rankine theory, Tresca, and von Mises theory. The first one is maximum principal stress theory, also called Rankine theory. The failure criteria is when maximum tensile stress in a material exceeds tensile stress in a uniaxial tension test. We can write it as sigma max greater than S1 and S1 is the maximum principal stress which is equal to S of yield. For failure to occur sigma max should be greater than yield strength. Due to its simple expression this theory is very easy to use. That's why this theory is used by ASME Section 8 Division 1 and ASME Section 1, that is power boiler. This theory holds good for brittle material, but not so good for ductile material. As the failure in, due to shear stress happens at much lower level than the maximum principal stress, that is S1. To be precise, for shear case, failure can occur at half of S1. So in order for it to be used for ductile material also, a higher safety factor to be used. That's the reason why ASME Section 8 Division 1 and ASME Section 1 and also power piping B31.1 are more conservative because they utilize this theory. As we can see in the figure, 
failure surface or yield is a square in black color while the code applies a further safety factor shown in green. The second theory is maximum shear stress theory or also known as Tresca theory. Here the condition for failure is failure occurs when maximum shear stress exceed half of yield strength. The failure surface here is a hexagon. This theory is used by SB section 8 division 2 before 2007 edition and it requires lower safety factor. It holds good for ductile material because the dominant mode of failure loading in a ductile material is shear stress. Some piping codes like B31.3 that is process piping uses a slightly modified form of it. This theory is also being utilized in ESME section 8 division 3 which is high pressure vessel code. And finally maximum distortional energy theory which is also commonly known as von Mises theory. Here the condition for failure is failure occurs when octahedral shear stress exceeds under root 2 or 3 times yield strength. It is the most complex of the three theories mentioned here. It is used by division 2 since 2007. It gives very good result for ductile material and it needs a lower safety factor but the complexity of the equation requires computer analysis such as FEA software. Failure surface is an ellipse circumscribing the hexagon of Tresca theory. In this figure, the failure surfaces of the three aforementioned theories are mapped on a graph. As we can see in the first and third quadrant, Tresca and Rankine theory are almost similar for an ideal condition. In the second and fourth quadrant, the failure envelope of Rankine theory is far greater than the Tresca theory. Also, the von Mises surface is shown by an ellipse. It is circumscribing the hexagon of Tresca theory. So Tresca theory is the most conservative here in terms of failure envelope. And codes often add a further safety factor which is called a design factor to these envelopes. Now we'll give a summary of comparison points between design by rule and design by analysis. First design by rule utilizes simplified design approach and empirical formulas for calculation. They are utilized by many popular codes including ESME section 8 division 1 and ESME section 8 division 2 part 4. It often utilizes simplified theory like Rankine or maximum principle stress theory. It has conservatism in design due to design factor, percentage of entity, etc. And it also ignores local analysis and usually only simplified elastic analysis is utilized. It usually does not need any sophisticated analysis or software. Design by analysis or deep K utilizes an analytical approach based on some analysis or simulation. They have various options to utilize advanced analysis methods like elastic plastic analysis, creep, fatigue, and fracture mechanics. It commonly uses von Mises stress theory, which is relatively complex and needs software programs like finite element analysis software. But this gives more accurate results for specific cases. Local analysis can be considered in this. Now here we will discuss the difference between ASME Section 8, Division 2, Class 1 and Class 2. For Class 1, the design margin based on tensile strength is 3. Here the DBA or Design by Analysis Part 5 cannot overrule Design by Rule Part 4. This is an important point. For non-fatigue cases, MDR and UDS certification can be waived. Here the maximum ratio of membrane stress to yield for hydro test is 0.9 and it can be used as an alternate for division 1 vessels for non-fatigue cases. Now for class 2 the design margin is 2.4. DBA part 5 can overrule design by rule part 4. MDR and UDS certification is a must even for non-fatigue cases. Maximum ratio of membrane stress to yield for hydro test is 0.95 and this class 2 is specifically introduced to compete with uh, rival codes like EN 13445 and PD 5500. In this slide, we'll discuss some key features of ESME Section 8 Division 3 for very high pressure 
applications. It is generally assumed to be above 10,000 psi. As we section 8 division 3 is a unique code uh, with no comparable standard. Here the design margin is 1.8 which is based on plastic analysis. It can allow analytical methods as well as experimental method. After hydro test, it allows for complete surface and volumetric examination. Sophisticated analysis required such as elastic plastic analysis and fracture mechanics. It is recommended for very high pressures generally above 10,000 psi. But it can be utilized for any pressure even well below 10,000 psi. Although in that range it won't be very economical. And we can refer to my previous uh, presentation on code comparison where I have given division 1, division 2 and division 3 comparison. In this slide, I have listed nominal design stress which is similar concept to allowable stress that is used in ASME codes for PD5500 and EN13445 that are extensively used in Europe as well as all over the world. See the link on the screen for allowable stresses of ASME section 8 division 1. In this schematic, I have used PD5500 2021 edition which is the latest one and for EN13445 I have used part 3 design addendum 8 2019. For PD5500, first we, we should mention the notations used by the code. So first is RE which is specified minimum yield strength at room temperature. Then RM specified minimum tensile strength at room temperature. RE slash T is minimum of RE at room temperature or at design temperature T or if these values are not available then we will go for proof strength 0.2 for materials with lesser elongation which is also called offset stress and for austenitic stainless steel it can be RP 1.0. RP.2 is minimum of a specified 0.2% proof stress at room temperature or temperature T. RP1.0 minimum of a specified 1.0% proof stress at room temperature or temperature T. And SRT is mean value of a stress required to produce a rupture in time T. For PD5500, if you can see the values are divided between a temperature range up to 50 degrees C. And then the second range is above 50 degrees C. And code advises users to linearly interpolate for values between 50 and 150 degrees C. So first the properties are divided into time independent which is non-creep service and time dependent design strength which is creep service. And as mentioned the properties are then further divided into temperature zones of up to 50 degrees C and above 150. And with material classification of PS and some low alloy steels on one side and austenitic steel on the other. So for carbon and low alloy steels, here groups 1 to 7, 9 and 11 are included in this series. The next slide will provide the detail on these material groups. So for carbon and low alloy steels and for material with specified elevated temperature up to 50 degrees C, nominal design stress is either 2 by 3 or 1.5 times of specified minimum yield strength at room temperature or 1 over 2.35 of minimum tensile strength at room temperature and for values above 150 degree C it is 2 by 3 or 1.5 times of RE slash T or 1 divided by 2.35 of specified minimum tensile strength at room temperature and for materials without specified elevated temperature up to 50 degree C it is 2 or 3 of specified minimum yield strength at room temperature or 1 over 2 by 3 5 1 over 2.35 of specified minimum tensile strength at room temperature and for material without specified elevated temperature above 150 degree C the factor is 1 divided by 1.6 times of RE slash T which is which the definition is available that it is yield strength at room temperature or proof strength of 0.2% or proof strength of 1.0 for austenite or it is 1 over 2.35 of minimum tensile strength at room temperature. And for austenitic seals and for material with specified elevated temperatures up to 50 degree C, nominal design stress is 2 over 3 of RE which is minimum yield strength at room temperature or 1 over 2.5 of minimum tensile strength at room temperature. For temperatures above 150 degree C, it is 1 divided by 1.35 of RE slash T which is minimum yield strength at room temperature or a proof strength of 0.2 
1% or proof strength of 1% for austenitic or 1 over 2.5 of RM which is minimum tensile strength at room temperature and for material without specified elevated temperature up to 50 degree C it is 2 over 3 of RE or 1 over 2.5 times of minimum tensile strength at room temperature and for for temperatures above 150 degree C it is 1 over 1.45 of RE slash T or 1 over 2.5 of minimum tensile strength at room temperature and for creep cases time dependent designs it is 1 over 3 of SRT which is mean value of the stress required to produce rupture in time T. Similarly for EN13445 code these values are for non bold items. First we will mention the notations. So first is RM slash 20. Here 20 means 20 degree C. So any value which is measured at 20 degree C. So RM is minimum tensile strength at 20 degree C. RM slash T. T is your you can say uh, temperature of consideration or design temperature. So minimum tensile strength at temperature T. And RM slash T and small t is tensile strength at test temperature. And RP 0.2 percent slash t is similarly like we had in PD5500. This is 0.2 percent proof strength at temperature T and RP 0.2 slash TT means 0.2 percent proof strength at test temperature. RP 1.0 slash T is 1.0 proof strength at temperature T. RP 1.0 TT equal to 1.0 percent proof strength at test temperature. And REH is upper yield strength. REH is a concept for those materials that exhibits two different yield points. And REH may be used in lieu or in place of RP 0.2% in case RP 0.2% is not available. Then we can use REH value. So it is divided into non cast steels and cast steels. And further based on their elongation percentage and further based on their percentage of elongation. So for non austenitic with rupture elongation lesser than 30% and at normal operating load the nominal design stress is 1 over 1.5 times of RP 0.2% slash T or 1 over 2.4% of RM slash T and for test and any other exceptional load the factor is 1 divided by 1.05 of RP of proof strength at 0.2% for test temperature. Similarly, for non austenitic with rupture elongation lesser than 30%, but with alternate route, normal operating load. Here, the alternate route means design by analysis techniques, and code can be referred for further definition of alternate route. And for normal operating load, the design stress is 1 over 1.5 times of RP 0.2% proof strength at temperature T or 1 over 1.875 of tensile strength at 20 degree C and for test or exceptional load it is 1 over 1.05 times of RP of 0.2% at test temperature. For austenitic steels with rupture elongation from 30% to below 35% for normal operating load it is it is 1 over 1.5 times of RP 1.0% proof strength at temperature T or for test and exceptional load it is 1 over 1.05 of, of RP 1% at test temperature. For austenitic steels with rupture elongation from 35% and above, for normal operating load, it is either 1 over 1.5 times of RP 1.0 T, which is based on 1% proof strength at temperature T, or a minimum of these two values with the steric. You can see if the value of RM slash T is available. Then the smaller of these two, like 1 over 1.2 percent of RP, 1 percent proof strength at design temperature T, or 1 over 3 of tensile strength at design temperature T. For test and exceptional load, it is 1 over 1.05 percent of RP or proof strength at 1 percent at test temperature, or 1 over 2 of RM or tensile strength at test temperature. And for cast steels, we have normal operating load, then we have design stress. 1 over 1.9 percent of RP at 0.2 percent proof strength or 1 over 3 of tensile strength at design at temperature of 20 degree C. And for test and exceptional load it is 1 over 1.33 times of RP 0.2 percent proof strength at test temperature. Now here is an interesting point in the comparison of design factor based on tensile strength. If you remember my previous videos for ESME section 8 division 1 the design factor based on tensile strength is 3.5 whereas design factor for ESME section 8 division 2 
class 1 is 3.0 and for class 2 it is 2.4 and in this figure we can see that for similar conditions design factor based on tensile strength for PD 5500 code is 2.3 2.35 and for EN 13445 code it is 2.4 as we can see that design factor is very close to what we have in ASME section 8 division 2 code and after this slide I I put some random info as notes that will be displayed without narration and which is helpful for this video as well as my previous videos on code parallel. So keep watching. Thank you.